This next section is um, about take-ups. In Belt Analyst we have a take-up tab and Belt Analyst calculates a minimum required tension from a static standpoint. Um, calculations are based on belt sag and belt slip and it also does an approximation of uh, carriage travel requirements. But carriage travel is really a dynamic condition so we really need to come to the dynamic program to get an accurate count. There are three different types of take-ups we're going to discuss um, here in this analysis and then in a more advanced analysis we'll talk about some more things you can do with the take-ups. First thing we're going to talk about is a gravity take-up. Uh, gravity take-up uh, as the picture shows is just uh, the basic gravity take-up is just a, a, a weight hanging vertically from the belt and uh, gravity take-up uh, in this analysis you can see the velocity and the displacement. The, um, the vertical gravity can respond just as fast as necessary to keep up with the take-up travel requirements and you can see here the velocity maximum and minimum velocity and displacement of the take-up and you can see a, basically a constant tension. The gravity take-up tower keeps basically a constant tension on the belt because it can move as fast as it needs to move. Let's look at the uh, next type of take-up. We'll look at a fixed take-up. A fixed is uh, sometimes called a screw take-up. It's simply a take-up that you manually set when the conveyor is stopped and when the conveyor is running it doesn't move. The uh, length of the belt stays the same. So the uh, take-up tension while running is brought over from uh, from belt analyst and if you want to change that value you need to change it in belt analyst. You can't change it here. So we hit the simulate button. We'll see now that the take-up travel doesn't move. Uh, velocity and displacement is zero but the tension changes. So as the belt stretches and contracts you see the resulting change in belt tension. Um, since the carriage doesn't uh, move to adjust for that. The third thing we'll talk about here is uh, gravity take up, horizontal gravity take up, horizontal carriage with a uh, with vertical gravity weight on the side. Now we've got to talk about uh, what happens uh, uh, directionally. So when the, because there's shivs in the system that have hit, uh, friction in them, if the carriage is uh, going in one direction or the other, um, you will get a change in tension. So we'll do a little calculation here uh, with, a, with five shivs, with a rope with five shivs in it. And you can see uh, the 21% uh, uh, increase in running tension when the carriage is in the negative direction and uh, about an 18% loss in tension when the carriage is going in the positive direction due to shivs. Those calculations can be found in the uh, SEMA uh, belt conveyor for uh, bulk materials uh, engineering handbook, sixth edition if you want to see where those calculations come from. We do the calculations and you can see here now the take up is traveling but it's kind of damped. It's not as nearly as much up and down as it was for gravity and that's because of the hysteresis and the shivs and you see the tension again changing as this goes up and down. So that's a gravity take up with the horizontal tower that have shivs in the rope. It might look something like this. next thing we'll look at is what we'll call a mechanical take up. This could be a, a winch, a hydraulic cylinder, any type of mechanical unit that automatically is trying to maintain belt tension. Um, and in, in this case the uh, uh, these mechanical devices have speed limitations. They can only go so fast. They can't respond as fast as gravity. So now we have to generate some type of a speed response curve which uh, dictates uh, uh, that when the carriage is getting pulled faster than uh, uh, it's capable of, the tension either goes up or down. If we're trying to uh, pull the carriage in, pull against the winch, the, take, the tension will go up and if the winch can't keep up with the uh, belt uh, stretch, the tension will go down. So you can take this plot and change these numbers and generate whatever curve represents the, the winch or the hydraulic cylinder that you're working with. So now you can see that uh, that we have uh, uh, take up carriage travel and displacement. Displacement is not as uh, different than it is on the other devices, and you can see a small change in tension uh, due to the fact that the carriage is trying to travel too fast in one direction or the other in this particular analysis.
The other thing we'll talk about here is if you've got a winch uh, or possibly a hydraulic cylinder, you do have the pit, uh, option of changing the tension on the fly. So for instance, when we stop, we might want to increase the belt tension from 100% of its running tension to say 200% for 20 seconds and then we'll, we'll gradually release that uh, tension back down to the running tension. And you can see that response. We increase the tension in the take up uh, according to a time curve and you can see the response in the tension in the analysis. And you can also see a big change in the, uh, in the uh, displacement and velocity of the carriage because we were changing the, the loads in the system as we, as we went. So this is the basic uh, take up parameters for gravity. Um, fixed and uh, mechanical take up and uh, the, the basic speed response uh, curve that you can build uh, for any type of device. Uh, vertical tower, um, you'll, it'll be 100% in both directions because it can go as fast as it wants. If we have a mechanical device of some sort, you want to build a, a velocity response curve that reflects the fact that the device can only go so fast in uh, either direction. And this will greatly depend on the particular device that you select and you could have to uh, use your uh, uh, equipment manufacturer to uh, tell you what that curve needs to look like.